in the United States, prices at the gas pump hit a 13-year high this weekend. The average cost of gasoline is now more than $4 a gallon for the first time since 2008. The volatility in the market is being blamed on supply disruptions related to the war in Ukraine and the possibility of an embargo on Russian oil and gas. And joining me now is Tom Bevan, co-founder and president of Real Clear Politics. Tom, great to see you. Uh, a lot to get to today, but first let's start off with those rising gas prices, which hit a record high today and are expected to go even higher. I'd like to get your thoughts on that and what do you think can be done, if anything, to bring some relief to consumers? Well, that is the question, and the Biden administration is trying to reassure Americans that they're going to use everything at their disposal. Uh, to to try and blunt the impact of gas prices, but you're right. I mean, we saw we saw oil go up to almost $140 a barrel today on the market before it slid back down. So it looks like gas prices are going to continue to rise. And the administration has been reluctant uh, to to start producing energy domestically. They've turned to Iran. They've turned to Venezuela uh, to try and make sure that there's enough oil on the market, um, but. So we'll have to see how this plays out. But right now, the administration, um, it, there's not a lot of confidence that they're doing what's necessary to prevent gas prices from continuing to rise to, to five, six, seven dollars a gallon. And of course, the political implications of that in a midterm year could be enormous. Yeah, and I was going to talk about that. You know, it's not just the gas prices that are going up, but we're also seeing home heating costs go up. And now, you know, what folks are paying at the grocery store. What impact do you think this could have on President Biden and his approval rating, which we know is already low? It is. Um, I was just looking at our Real Clear Politics average. We had a number of polls that came out after his State of the Union address. Very little movement for him. Uh, Republicans are locked in against him. Very little movement among uh, independents. This is the problem for the Biden administration. While the Ukraine war is is eating up all of the headlines, uh, and, and certainly is a concern of the American people because they're seeing it on their television screens day in and day out, the number one concern is inflation and the economy. And there, we're seeing nothing but continued bad news. And there's not a lot the administration can do about that. And everything that's going on around the globe is sort of conspiring to make all of that worse. Um, and again, the political implications of that, not just gas, but as you mentioned, food prices, um, you know, the price of used goods, used cars, et cetera, in the country, um, that's something that Americans feel in their lives every single day all around them. And they will pay, make the, the politicians who are in power pay for that at the polls when the time comes. Yeah, and as you mentioned, the midterms, I mean, we're getting closer to the midterm elections. What races are you following right now? Well, I mean, there are a number of House races that are that are uh, interesting to watch, but mostly the action is in the Senate. And whether it seems like Republicans are in pretty good position uh, to take recapture control of the House of Representatives, despite the fact Democrats have done better in redistricting than people thought. But in the Senate uh, right now, we're watching all those close races, particularly out in the West, the two to keep an eye on, Arizona, Mark Kelly, incumbent Democrat, and uh, uh, Cortez Masto in Nevada, also incumbent Democrat. Both of those Democrats are in trouble um, and, and could be the key to the Republicans' takeover. Obviously, there are other races like Raphael Warnock in Georgia. Um, there are races in, in Pennsylvania and North Carolina. But as far as incumbent Democrats go, those are the two most vulnerable. And whether they can stave off what are pretty, pretty heavy political headwinds at this point, um, we will have to wait and see. Yeah, Tom, I also know that uh, Texas kicked off the midterm election season last week by holding the country's first primaries. Uh, Republican Governor Greg Abbott, who's a Catholic, and Beto O'Rourke, a Democrat who ran for president in 2020, are expected to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the November gubernatorial election. Um, talk to us about that, and how do you think that will shake out? Well, again, for Democrats all across the country, uh, it's the first midterm of, of the first uh, term of the administration, always historically bad, always historically uh, a, a rough go. And so you add on top of that what we just talked about, the political headwinds on, on um, not just inflation, but even the other issues that are, that are sort of percolating out there, whether it's crime, the education issues, parental rights, all of those, seem, those issues seem to be working against Democrats. So when you look at a place like Texas, where Democrats have made gains in the past few cycles and have this dream of turning Texas blue, now it's not going to happen this cycle. And while Beto O'Rourke at one point was pretty popular within the Democratic Party and generated a lot of enthusiasm, um, it's going to be really, really hard for him uh, or, or for any Democrats really in Texas to mount sort of an uphill battle 
because that state is still more red than blue at this point. Too many registered Republicans, too many independents who are leaning Republican this time around. Yeah, Texas definitely is a hard nut to crack right there. Before I let you go, Tom, uh, wondering what else you were following. Uh, well, as I mentioned, the other issues that, that are really on the back burner right now uh, are crime. You, saw, you heard Joe Biden mention crime and, and not wanting to uh, defund the police very strongly in his State of the Union. That puts him at odds, not just with, uh, you know, members of the left wing of his party, but a lot of these Democrats that are running uh, as progressives around the country. So that's one issue. Continue to watch crime, not just, again, not just in the big cities, but in sub suburbs around the country, which is where Republicans have had trouble in the past couple of cycles. Um, and then the ed education issue, it continues to be uh, an issue that Republicans are trying to capitalize on the way that uh, they did in Virginia, in the Virginia gubernatorial race. We'll see whether uh, they're able to make that a national issue that uh, that helps them across the country in November. All right, Tom, I have to leave it right there. Thanks so much for coming on. Great to have you. Thank you.